In this tutorial we'll be creating this particle text reveal which you can use for logos as well. Let's get into it. So we'll start off with this text layer here and I'm going to create a new solid for our Saber. I'll add Saber to it and go into my core, set it to text and select my text layer. Now you can adjust these settings to however you want to. I'm just going to create something pretty subtle like so. On the start and end size here I'll set both to 50. And I'll go to our first frame, set a keyframe for our end offset from 0 to 100 in about 3 seconds. And just to add some continuous movement, I'll set a keyframe for the mask evolution, go to about here and set it to 25. So this just gives it a continuous movement so it doesn't stay still while the stroke is being animated. I'll select the keyframes here of the end offset and just go into the graph and create something like so. So this is what we've got so far. All right, pretty basic. Let's duplicate the Saber layer and I'll rename this one to Particles. And we can go ahead and hide this one. Now on our Particle layer, we're gonna add the effect that's called CC Ball Action. And right now it seems blurry, so I'll go into the ball size and set it to 25. Let me hide the text layer. And basically this effect creates small circles around any effect or text you're applying it to. Now I'll set the coloring here to smooth and we don't need any shading so I'll set it to minus 100. Under grid spacing this basically defines how many particles we're gonna have. So the lower you go, for example 3, you're gonna have more of these circles appear. We can start with something like 2 and if we play this back you can see it follows the saber layer. Now let's begin animating it. So if I set the scatter to 5 it's basically displacing the particles and we can animate the scatter motion here with this keyframe. So let's go into our first frame and we're gonna set some keyframes for the scatter, scatter motion and also the displace. I'll set the displace to 30. Let's go to our three second mark here and set the displace back to zero. Scatter motion, let's set it to 50 and the scatter set back to zero. I can set the grid spacing to about one here. Now, if we want some more of these, we can go into the saber lay here and set a keyframe for the glow intensity. So if I set this to about 35, you can see we have more particles appearing here depending on our glow. So let's set this to maybe 40 actually. Let's set a keyframe from here and to the three second mark, we'll bring it down to 15. And just like that, we've got the particle effect pretty much completed. Now to make the particles a bit more visible, I will add the default glow to this and just increase the radius a bit and lower my threshold, up the intensity a bit. And let's reveal the first Sable layer and drop it on top. And basically set four keyframes for these four settings closer to our three second mark. It's gonna fully reveal and I'm just gonna create sort of a glow up here. So these settings are gonna start from zero, glow up to something like so, and going back to something pretty subtle like so. Let's set these layers to additive. So we'll go here, select them, click additive, and we can also reveal the text over time. So about our three second mark, I'll set a keyframe for zero to a hundred for our main text layer. And since I don't want it to be just plain white, I'm gonna add a gradient effect to it, swap the colors and just give it some interesting color like so. Now we can go ahead and set the opacity for the particles effect as well, cause we don't need it afterwards. And let's preview what we've got. All right, so this is pretty much it for the effect. Now, one cool thing about the CC ball action is it's a 3D effect. So if I go ahead and create a camera here and let me make the saber and the text layer 3D, you can see if I go into my camera tool here, we can go around the particles in 3D space since it is a 3D effect. So you can animate the camera if you want to. And also you've got an option here for twisting it. So if you want to create sort of a twisty kind of reveal, there you have it. Yep, this is it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.